So how should we view the new release of the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines version 2.2? Well, as of the date of this video, we are not anywhere close to having the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines version 2.2 as a legal requirement. However, it's obviously a best practice. You, if you can incorporate those additional seven success criteria from conformance level AA into your website, that's a great thing. But it's definitely not a legal requirement. And I don't think we would even see um, any serial plaintiff's law firms make any 2.2 claims. So behind me, I have a whiteboard and I have uh, a lot of text on it. But let's just first start off so everybody can relate the different versions of the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. We have version 2.0, which I call the classic standard, and conformance level AA has 38 success criteria or accessibility considerations or things to do under the 2.0 AA standard. And then 2.1 added 12 additional success criteria to 2.0. So nothing was undone with 2.0, but just 12 additional things were added to it. So what's important to keep in mind with the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines is they are backwards compatible, which means nothing is ever done by a new version, it just merely adds to it. And then with 2.2, we are adding seven additional success criteria to 2.1. And these additional success criteria help address issues with people that have low vision, people that have uh, motor impairments, and or cognitive and learning disabilities. So, um, 2.2 really does help accessibility. It's addressing different things. Um, some of these are related to what you can find in previous versions, um, but there are only seven additional things to incorporate in your website to be 2.2 AA conformant. But as I just stated, 2.2 um, as of the date of this video hasn't even be, been released yet. So even when it does get released, let's say it happens in December of 2022 or January of 2023, it's unrealistic to expect uh, conformance with 2.2. So yeah, it's, it's great if you can uh, make your website conformant, but I can tell you from experience that most, web, most uh, website owner operators, most companies, they are still working to get 2.0 and 2.1 issues taken care of. Will we see claims from serial law firms? Highly unlikely. They may reference the fact that there's a new um, version of the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, but I think it's um, unrealistic even for serial plaintiff's law firms to start referencing 2.2 issues as, as aggressive as they are. Um, however, they may cite to um, the fact that there's a new version. They may cite to 2.2, uh, but I think their claims will still be mostly uh, claims that you can find under version 2.0 or, or claims of accessibility issues under 2.0. Um, so when you are looking to follow best best practice, which I refer to 2.2 um, and 2023 as a best best practice because it really is taking it to the next level. And if you are 2.2 conformant, it is something that would be great to um, uh, mention in your accessibility statement because you are um, next level and in making sure your website is accessible. Um, but it is important to keep in mind the resources you have available because there are many entities that are still, they're just working through 2.0, they're getting their re-audits and they're looking through the re-audits and trying to incorporate those um, accessibility issues and remediate those. Um, so there's just, there's a lot already. Most websites are not even 2.1 conformant and even for that matter, 2.0 conformant. So um, it depends how much, do you have the developers, do you have the personnel available um, to uh, be 2.2 conformant? And then the DOJ intends to publish a notice of proposed rulemaking for website accessibility in 2023. And this is for Title II of the ADA, so for public entities. The significance there is that even if you are a private entity, this, um, this regulation for Title II is there's, I think there's a really good chance there will be a follow up for Title III, which will, um, which will apply to private entities. And so uh, you'll want to pay real attention to this, and it'll be very interesting to see what version of WCAG they incorporate, or if they incorporate a version of, at all. They might, um, they might reference it, but there might be, um, they might hedge a little bit because it is so hard 
to have a binary yes or no with the web content accessibility guidelines. I'll get that get to that in another video. But the point is, is that there will be uh, there's likely regulation forthcoming, and it will be interesting to see what version of the web content accessibility guidelines they reference and or incorporate. Also, the Access Board uh, may refresh Section 508 to uh, incorporate the Web Content Accessibility Guides, Guidelines 2.1 or 2.2. Currently, um, the last rate refresh was in 2017, which was ahead of the WCAG 2.1 release. So we didn't see 2.1, so I'm interested to see what Section 508 incorporates in their next refresh. But this is the legal rundown. Um, it won't, you won't, in 2023, I don't think you will see any legal authorities reference 2.2 as a requirement. I think what you, what you may see mention of a new release, but um, conformance of 2.2 at this point is unrealistic, especially because all we have today is a working draft. And so even when it is officially published, um, it will still take time for that uh, new version to settle and for entities to be conformant, uh, to make their websites conformant with it.